face of your new police state. I, I believe the uh, Washington uh, PUC has, has postponed their hearing to find out how that election takes place uh, of the new board. Uh, I, I, I read that the other day, and uh, I... I was, I'm old enough, I was around, remember I told you I had paper straws, uh, when, when uh, and this was even more controversial, uh, the purchase of Washington, or, uh, Utah Power and Light by Scottish Power. Yeah. So uh, we already have a precedent in Idaho uh, to where a foreign entity has bought a, a utility. And you need to realize that the water system of Boise is run by the French. Uh, and, and a lot of water systems. So uh, having a, uh, you know, utilities by their very nature are what uh, a lot of people want because they are a constant source of, you know, not big wild returns, uh, but they're a constant source of cash. The, the utility itself is a, is a government regulated utility, but the ownership of any utility is a private fungible asset that you can buy on the stock market. You know, if you're if you're the Bank of China, there's nothing to say you couldn't have gone on the market and bought every stock, every share of Avista in the private market. So the, the very, but it's a line between the utility that's regulated and what is under the the ut regulatory utility. And there are things that Public Utilities Commission can do, but. We ran through this scenario when Scottish Power, because in in it is very important up here. But you got to think that 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 uh, that uh, power for irrigation in the Scottish Power area uh, that was the second biggest expense of almost every farm over there was their electricity, and 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 of course that went from from good old little Utah Power and Light to Scottish Power. And now Warren Buffett owns it. It's part of Rocky. It's part of, and you know, and that's one of the issues that is that utility, the 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 security analysts tell me is going to sell. It is literally one of the smallest. Now Idaho Power is also in that, but the thing about Idaho Power is they're making enough money. They're kind of keeping the wolves away because their stock price is so high uh, relative to the way they're operated. But there are very few uh, utilities. And the question is, who's going to own it? I am not excited about this at all when I saw it uh, to begin with. I just, uh, uh, you know, that, but it was going to sell. Uh, and I think it, uh, if you unwound it tomorrow, which, you, which they tell me, the public utilities, say they have to have a guarantee, they have to know what the rates are going to be, but they can only do it for so long. Yesterday when I flew up here, there was a gal from the PUC on the, that was in the row or two rows in front of me, and they had an IRP. Did anybody go to the IRP meeting that uh, Vista had up here yesterday? They had their first one. Of the, they they have to do an integrated resource plan, uh, and and she said we are not expecting a big turnout. And I says after that turnout you had up here that you I, I'm sure you were at uh, uh, that they had about the purchase. Said that's where the decision is made. That's what's within the corporate structure of, of a VISTA that's in the state of Idaho. What's their mix going to be in new wind, new solar, transmission? How are you going to integrate the new wind projects come on with hydro? That's the decision that the Idaho Public Utilities Commission has some say in. Did anybody in those hearings say that the, the Public they, Utilities but Commission have, but there's stop there's I think there's three things, and I can't remember because I did get a briefing on this. I've, the problem is when it becomes a contested case, uh, we have to, uh, the governor, I, those utility commissioners are just like any other government entity. They're serving as a quasi-judicial deal, a quasi-judicial position, and you can't intervene with them. I mean, you can make, you can put out a press release and say, but, but to call them and say you can't do that, is, is a violation of, of the, it's just like telling the judge, 
uh, that a judge is making a decision on somebody that did something and say, we want you to make your decision that way, because they're operating as quasi-judicial entity at that point in time. I think there's three ways, uh, you know, the, what's the cost going to be? And, and I, think the, I, think the, uh, I think it's only like three years, uh, and it's within that integrated resource plan. It's how they implement, because they come up and say, here's our plan, here's where we're going to go, and then we're going to come to you and ask for rate increases or decreases predicated on that. You know, the hydropower industry in the Pacific Northwest, we have an automatic increaser or decreaser. And same thing with the gas industry. If, if the price of gas goes down, you know, of course, the utilities always take credit for it. Oh, we lowered your rate. Well, it was in law that they had to. Uh, but they, and then when it goes up, then they blame the law. When it goes down, they take credit for it, but that's human nature. Uh, but I, and I'm not excited about it. And, and I, I think even if it is postponed, and, and the way I understand it is, is the, uh, because the, the biggest stockholder, the, the province, has basically got the, the, um, the uh, resignation of the board that the Washington PUC delayed their decision on it. When, when I first heard about it, I thought, uh, well, prior to the sale of this, remember that Governor Inslee didn't want any carbon electrons crossing the line over here. And so they came to me and I said, great, we'll take the carbon electrons over in Washington. And they want that power and they want us to say that, that you know, all of a sudden, Idaho, with all their hydropower, we're the ones using more com carbon. Let it reflect. And so this, this process was taking place way before uh, the Ontario Canadians got involved. And, and, and that's because uh, it, it, is Washington, it was Washington Water Power. They're the, the, they're, the big, they're the big user, and they're very dependent upon their PUC. Alaska... I think it's just gas that goes up into Alaska. That was, it's a, it's a yeah, they just they kind of got that off of their off of their shelf. But the, really, the big one, and well, and, and Washington, and of course the issue there is the operation of Libby Dam, which is a big a big darn deal and it's part of it. But I I think there's three things that they have to do, and then if the PUC turns them down, then the then they'll litigate. They'll go to court against the PUC to allow it to happen. Now the utility that's here, we get to regulate what they get as far as the price of power. But the mothership, you know, we, it, uh, Rocky Mountain Power is a classic example. The, the rate payers down there, that's owned by Warren Buffett. You don't get to tell him how he makes Nakona boots uh, because it's part of the same company. All you have control over is the operating, uh, entity inside the state of Idaho as a public utilities commission because that utility there is part of the massive uh, Berkshire Hathaway empire. So that's what I know. Uh, we're not excited about it. I, if that company was going to sell out, I'd much rather had it. But, but the issue that somebody said, would you really want it? Uh, we, you know, we, I, was, I was hoping that it was going to be somebody else so we'd have three different utilities in Idaho so we could kind of uh, maybe play one against another, try and keep our rates down, uh, keep our affordable power here in Idaho. Uh, but that, that company, if, if Washington or somebody or, the, or basically the two parties disagree, I'll guarantee you that company's going to be back on the market and somebody else is going to buy it.